Thank you for ushering in the presence of God. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn with me real quick to the book of 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. 17th chapter. The book of 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. If you'll stand with me in honor of the reading of the word, if you can. This first verse says this, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Father, I ask you, dear God, Lord, to speak through my mouth. Lord, may it be your words and not mine. May they hear, dear God, the tones of my voice, but dear God, your very, your very speech coming out of my mouth. Lord, we need you more than anything in life. We just need you. And I thank you, dear God, Lord, for meeting us right where we're at. I ask you, dear God, to speak to our hearts. Dear God, change our lives by your word in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Look at somebody before you're seated and just simply said, living without compromise. Living without compromise. Amen. Let me tell you this. It's easy to compromise. Amen. It's easy. I've said this before. Any dead fish can float downstream. Amen. Any, any dead fish can float downstream. It doesn't take a whole lot to float downstream. It takes something different to swim across uh, against the current and, uh, and move up to multiply. And... Uh, as I, as I go through this word, I'm going to take you through just a little stroll of Elijah. Elijah just simply appears, just appears in the 17th chapter of 1 Kings. A lot about Elijah, but we don't know really a whole lot about his prior. We know that he was not a polished man. He was not like Jeremiah or Isaiah. He was not a polished prophet. He was like uh, John the Baptist. Matter of fact, I believe that John the Baptist had his spirit. You know what I'm saying? It was the same spirit, uh, same, same message. And I believe that as Elijah come up on the scene, he wasn't here to play around. Amen. And I, I believe that, listen, I believe that God, we're living in a time where we don't have a lot of time to play. How many agrees with that? We just don't have a lot of time to play. And I believe that God's taken the play out of the church because we we have We've had a good time, amen, just kind of playing in the past, but God's taken the play out of the church. I believe that time is getting serious, and I believe that, listen, I believe that when Elijah comes, Elijah simply means the Lord of Jehovah, Je the Lord Jehovah is my God. The mission was to call people back to worship of Jehovah, because at this point, they had started serving Baal, they started serving the fertility God, and now we see that um, we see that Jezebel, which is Ahab's wife, she talked to King Ahab and just simply talked him into building her a temple where she could go and worship Baal. So now we have Baal, the worship of Baal being polluted with the worship of Jehovah, and now most of the Israelites is worshiping Baal. Amen? Uh, a lot like we're, we're in the shape in, in, in America today. But I, I want you just to tell you that I believe that everybody, we can't blame it on a nation. We've got we to gotta bring it back home and make sure that our life is right. Because I believe that God blesses those, amen, that are right with God. I believe God blesses those that are living without compromise. Amen? As, let me just go through this just real quick. Uh, King Ahab yielded to Jezebel's desires and even built a private temple where they could worship Baal. Her plan was to exterminate the worshipers of Jehovah and have all the people of Israel serve Baal. That was the plan. Amen. That was the plan. The spirit of Jezebel is simply this. Are you guys ready for this? It's domination, manipulation, and control. I'm going to say it again. The spirit of Jezebel, it is domination, manipulation, and control. A lot like we face today. Elijah in the New Testament, let's go to Matthew, the 17th chapter. It says this in the 10th verse, it says, Then the disciples asked him, Why do the teachers of the religious law insist that Elijah must return 
before the Messiah comes. And Jesus replied, Elijah is indeed coming first to get everyone ready. But I tell you, Elijah has already come, but he wasn't recognized. They chose to abuse him, and in the same way, they will also make the Son of Man suffer. Then the disciples realized they was talking about John the Baptist. As we look at these passage, I believe that this is what God is, is working on the church in this hour. He's trying to bring the church that we could we remove all compromise from our life, and we would simply have the same message that John the Baptist had, the same message that Elijah had, and that's simply to repent and return back to God. You may hear that a lot and may not even like what, what I say when I talk about that, but I'm telling you, the blessings of God does not come to those that's walking in disobedience. It doesn't. As we, as we look at the word in Deuteronomy, it simply says this, if you carefully, the 11th chapter of Deuteronomy says, if you carefully obey the commands that I am giving you today, and if you love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart and soul, then he will send the rains with proper in the proper seasons and the early and late rains so that you can bring in your harvest of grain, new wine and, and olive oil. He will give you a lush pasture, a pasture lamb in, for your livestock, and, your, and you yourselves will have all that you want to eat. That's a promise that was given to the Israelites. So it goes on to say this. Be careful. Don't let your hearts be deceived so that you turn away from the Lord and serve and worship other gods. If you do, the Lord's anger will burn against you. He will shut up the skies and hold back the rain, and the ground will fail to produce its harvest. Then you will quickly die in that good land that the Lord has given you. Now watch this. The reason I brought that scripture up is because simply that's what's happened in Elijah's day. The God promised the Israelites, he said, listen, if you follow me and do what I tell you, the rain's going to come at the proper time. It's going to water the crops, and you will enjoy lush pasture. You will enjoy the blessings of God. But if you don't, you're going to find out that the heavens is going to shut up the rain. And now God sends, God sends Elijah and simply tells them this. He said, listen, I'm going to shut it off. He, t- he told him, he said, he, he, told, he told Elijah, he said, shut up. He said, just speak to the heavens that it bring no rain. And so at this point, now El- Elijah goes to Ahab and he just tells him, he tells him like this. He tells, the, he tells, Elijah, he tells Ahab that it will not rain in October. Come on, it will not, it, you won't get the early rains, nor will you get the latter rains. Matter of fact, I'm going to pray, and it's not going to rain for three years. This is already six months in. They didn't see any rain. They was waiting for that, that rain to mature the crops, but it didn't show up. And then Elijah goes up to Ahab and simply says this, and you know what? You think this is something? You're waiting for a rain? It's not going to rain for another three years. This may not mean anything unless you was trusting in a God that was supposed to bring you rain. See, I believe that there's only one God. Amen. I believe that there's only one true and living God, and that's the very one that paid the very price for my sin debt. Amen. That bought me back from my destruction. I don't know why we brag about running from God. When we couldn't pay our debt, amen, we couldn't pay our sin debt, and yet he paid it even before he was born. He paid the ultimate price to buy us back from destruction, and all he asked us to do is simply receive him as our personal Savior, amen, and serve him. And he simply says this, if you want the blessings of God, you've got to follow me, and you've got to just simply take out other gods before me, away from me, amen. God held the rain back because of the prayer of Elijah for three and a half years. Now watch this. In the middle of that, Elijah wasn't very popular. Matter of fact, the Lord told him, he said, I want you to, I want you to hide behind the brook of Cherith, and I'll command the ravens to feed you. That may not seem like a big thing, but if you know the, the character of ravens, they're not about to share anything that they take. 
They're little thieves. They'll rob from here and there, and they'll keep it all themselves. If they find something shiny, they'll put it in their nest because they're a greedy bird. And yet God chose something very unlikely to feed Elijah. And God just told him, he said, Elijah, I want you to trust me. I want you to go by the brook, and I'm going to take care of you there. I believe that, listen, if we live without compromise, I believe that God will take care of you in the middle of the, some of the biggest storms, in the middle of some of the, the, the worst things that could ever happen in life. I believe that God will take care of his people. I believe that with all my heart. I believe that I have a word from the Lord, and I believe that God has given me direction and instruction, amen, for this very hour. And this is what I've been preaching for the last year. Repent and make sure that you're right with God. Amen. I know that we're right through the blood of Jesus, but listen to me. If you want to walk in the blood of Jesus, if you want to walk in the blessings of Jesus, you cannot grieve the Holy Spirit of God whereby we're sealed unto, unto the day of redemption. we got to hear his voice. Why? Because if I, if I go forward and I, make, and I miss a turn, I'm going to miss out on, he, on what he has for me. And I believe that God wants to bless his people. Watch this. Let's look in 1 Kings, the 17th chapter and the second verse. It says, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn eastward, and hide thyself by the brook of Cherith, and before Jordan. And it shall be that if thou drink of the brook, I have commanded, and the ravens will feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook of Cherith, that before, that before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Come on, give God some praise. The ninth verse says this. The Lord speaks back to, back to Elijah. He says, now get thee, after the brook dried up, he says, arise and get the, the seraphith, which belongeth to Sidon, and dwell there. And behold, I have commanded the widow, a widow woman, there to sustain thee. And he rose and went to seraphim. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow woman was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water and a vessel that I may drink. And she, she was going to fetch it. And he called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, Lord, I have given the Lord. Lord, thy God get liveth. And I have not a cake, but a handful of meal, and a barrel in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go and dress it for dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as do as thou said, but make me therefore a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make thee for the, thine. You and thy son, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall there a cruise of the oil fail, until the God that the Lord sendeth rain unto the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days, and the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord which he spake unto Elijah. Come on, give God some praise. What am I saying? Sometimes it does not make sense. Sometimes what God will ask you to do, it doesn't make sense. I, I want to tell you, how many have ever had God speak something to, that's just simply backwards than you would do it yourself? You're not blaspheming me when you say that. Amen. How many has, has God has asked you to do something that is just simply completely opposite of what you know to do or that you would do. And that's just the way God works. You know why? Because he wants your obedience. And he chose the foolish things to confound the wise. God will take nothing and make something out of it. And I believe that, listen, I believe as we simply listen to him, I believe that God will simply give you provision. This is what happened. He went to the woman. He asked her, he said, bake me a cake. Listen to me. If she wouldn't have done it, God would have provided for Elijah. But God's plan was not just for to feed Elijah. God's plan was to feed the little widow woman that was probably praying to God, amen, and saying, God, give me provision. So God, God sent Elijah to her house to bless the house, and all she had to do is be obedient with what she had. 
How many times have we held on to something that God is trying to get us to turn loose? Amen? Because of it's something that we can see, something we can trust in. And she simply said this, let it be according to your word. Amen? Let it be according to what you, what you said. I will bake you a cake and I'll bring it to you. And the moment she started digging in that meal, the meal, every time she'd dig in it, it would multiply. Every time she would take out a cup, a cup would return. Every time she'd take a little bit of oil, amen, the oil returned. And the Bible said it stayed, amen, until the, until the rains came. God took care of her. Why? Because of her obedience. And she refused to compromise. I believe, listen, let's go to James 5.17. Simply says this, Elijah was a human as we are, and yet he prayed earnestly and no rain would fall, that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. Then he prayed again, and then the sky sent down rain, and the earth began to yield its crops. A man such as you and I, you believe that we have that kind of power? You believe that? I believe that. I believe that we can speak to storms. I believe that we can pray for rain, and we get rain. Amen. You can see the product of that out here with this grass. Amen. We prayed, and we watered. Amen. We went and got water in 1,000-gallon tanks, and we prayed, and we prayed. Amen. And then we finally got rain. But God would always bless us with just enough. Amen. There's times that we didn't need any rain, and God would shut it off. There's times that we've had storms that was headed right for the church, tornadoes headed right for the church. Amen. You can see two bald-headed men out there on the patio. One of them's in the sound booth. We went out and just simply said this, in the name of Jesus, you're not coming here. You turn. You turn. In the name of Jesus. And we watched those storms, amen, go the other direction. And I believe that we have that power. Amen. A man such as I, uh, such as us, prayed that it would not rain for three and a half years. I'm not going to pray that rain. I'm not going to pray that prayer. Amen? But I'm telling you, we have that power. That same spirit, the spirit of Elijah, I believe, is raising up in America. I've said this before. I, I believe that same spirit of Elijah is raising up in America. I believe it has been for quite some time that God is raising up men and women that would not compromise in their faith. And in their conviction, I believe that they're the ones that's going to be crying out, repent. I believe that that's the message. People don't want to hear it. Amen. They don't want to hear it. They, they want to hear something. Come on, let's, let's, let's talk about all the good things. But listen to me. The good things will not come unless people are right with God. It just won't. One of these days, come on, you'll call me up and say, Pastor, you was right. Amen. If you don't, you don't. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just telling you that this is the time that we're living in. Probably in just a few days, you're going to see some horrendous things. Come on, and in the middle of it, you will be blessed in the middle of it. I believe that. Listen to me, and that's why it's very important as I cry out to you tonight is to make sure that your household is right. Make sure that you are right. If you are compromising in your convictions, amen, the things that used to bother you, if it doesn't bother you anymore, you are backslidden. I'm going to preach it anyway, whether you say amen or not. If you're doing things that used to convict you and it doesn't bother you anymore, you are backslidden. Does that mean you're going to hell? It means that you will, you will probably suffer hell here on earth. I don't know. Only God knows that. But my responsibility is to tell you it's time to get right. How do we get right? We get right by repenting. God, forgive me. Forgive me, dear God, for, for knowing to do right and doing it not. Dear God, forgive me for the things that I didn't do. I know we all got flesh, but you must understand that this is the time that God is raising up men and women of God because this is the time that God wants to bless his house. Amen. 
I believe the Lord is simply saying this, return to worship. Return and come back. Return. It is so easy to justify things. And, and this is what the Lord spoke to me. I, I mean, he just spoke to me. That, 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 that God, is, God is dealing with hearts even right now where we're sitting. And, and they're online. I, I, I don't know how many people is, is, is out there and, and the Lord is touching them right now. But in this house, I feel a pull of the anointing. I do. Because God can convict you of something. And you justify it and do it anyway. See, where I find my convictions is when I'm in worship or when I'm in prayer, when I'm driving down the road, when I'm still. You know what I'm saying? When I'm still before him. My quiet time. Your quiet time may be somewhere else. But in my quiet time, the Lord will simply say this, I want you to stop that. I want you to do this. In our busy time, we would justify it because we get in our reasoning. And the Lord says, I'm calling my people to be still and know that I'm God. I wonder what would happen if our whole nation would repent. I know what would happen. I know we'd have one of the greatest revivals that we've ever seen on planet Earth. And I'm really excited about that revival because it's coming. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. We're not weeks away from it. I believe we're days away from it. I believe when people will, will stand up and cry out to God and simply say this, God saved me and my family. Amen? I can see them coming down the road. I can see them standing on the parking lot. Oh, the Lord said it's coming when we got the parking lot done. We're about two months in being done. It's done. At least that part is. And we've seen a lot of cars on that parking lot. A few weeks ago, I'd say, I hope they don't park on the grass. But now I'm saying this, fill the grass up. Come on, where, where, we, where we just got through seating where they just got through seating in the back, feel the grass up. Feel every inch of this parking lot up, every inch of this property. Go back to the, let's, let's go on, the, on the, the south part, on the 21 acres on the other side. The Lord told me a number of years ago, he says, you're going to need every bit of that property. We haven't used every bit of this property. We're only using half of it now. 43 acres that God has ordained and bought, paid for here. And he simply said this, build a place of refuge. And I believe that we're standing in the time that God is building a refuge for his people. And he says this, get ready. Get ready. As she closes, as she comes to the piano, I'll close. We have fought a good fight, and we're not done. I've watched God bring provision, resources. God simply amazes me. Sister Kaylee put together a video of 2005 when we come to this house, come to the property. We had a we had an outreach of giving water. I don't know if we did we give sodas or where just water. Get what it was we went in, went in town and just gave free free drinks away. At a wonderful time of just multiple people coming and just serving, serving the community. And as Kaylee put the video together, it was just simply where we was and where we were at. Back then it was just a group of people 
with some water. And now it's Hope International. It's Jeremiah House. Smiles of Hope. And all the various ministries that connect to this body. I believe that God has put us here to be a refuge and a lighthouse. The message has always been holiness. It's never changed. And it's not going to change. Because that's the only way God's presence comes in a body. We're spoiled as a church. We are. I tell people, I say, go, you know, go and visit somewhere. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying that other people don't have the presence of God, but we are blessed here. We're blessed when God comes and walks. Come on. And I know he lives within us, and, and there's no room that we can build for him, but you can feel him walk into the room. We are blessed. He walks into the room because there's people seeking the face of God. Not their own desires and not their own self. He comes in the room because people are wanting him. That they made up their mind that they're not going to serve other gods. And I'm asking you today. Let's go one more, one more night. What would happen if tonight, if there's any comfort, if there's, there's any compromise in this house, if you just simply say, you know what, I'm done with that. Maybe you want to bring your compromise and put it on this altar. Maybe we need to burn some things. Maybe you need to put a a controller on your phone to keep you from visiting porn sites. Maybe you need to apologize to somebody. Maybe you need to forgive somebody. Maybe... We're going to sing. And I ask you to stand with me tonight. Repentance is to change your mind about sin. I don't have to worry about I don't have to worry about sinking in sin. I, I don't. You know why? Because I fell in love with Jesus. I did. I'm not saying I, I walk perfectly all the time, but I really try to walk as uprightly as I can. The Word says anything without that's not faith is sin. But I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit that I lean on, that I trust in. So I ask you tonight, if there's something that God told you to get rid of, don't you trust him enough that he's going to take care of you by the brook? He's going to take care of you at the widow's house? Because the Bible tells us that he goes on to confront 450 prophets of Baal and winds up cutting 450 prophets of Baal's head off. Slays them. He called fire down from heaven. It licked up the sacrifice. Come on, even the barrels of water, even the water licked it up. Burn it off. 
Don't you think he's going to take care of you? Some crutch that you've been hanging on to or some, some direction you feel like you're going to go, don't you think he's going to take care of you? I promise you he will.